Welcome back to our Sustainable FinTech podcast. I'm Zoe Heed and I'm the program coordinator for our program. I'm here today with Arjun from Anam. Hello, Arjun. Hey, Zoe. How's it going? Good. How are you? Good, thank you. Thank you very much for having me on. Of course. Tell us a bit more about you being a founder and your experience as a founder. Right. That's a loaded question for a first <laughs> one. Um, tell you about me being a founder. So I think being a founder is something that's almost synonymous with my being and who I am and the way I've been brought up, uh, specifically coming from an entrepreneurial background with my parents who migrated to South Africa in 1996 when South Africa had just recently broken away from the apartheid regime. And so they felt it was a new market. It was an interesting market to go build a new life and set something up. And that's really where my roots in entrepreneurship were laid. We moved to South Africa when I was a baby. I was only six months old, but I grew up around seeing my parents build a business from scratch in an entirely new country, entirely new market and an entirely new industry. So um, I think me being a founder is very synonymous with that upbringing, but also came with its own unique challenges. I've never really had a um, what most people would call linear career trajectory in, in any sense of the word, really. I just really just dabbled around in multiple things and tried to get my hands dirty in as many things as I could from a very early age. Um, I spent a lot of my initial days giving back to the community, supporting underprivileged youths to not only empower themselves, but also those around them. And that's really where my passion for impact came from, having grown up in South Africa. Um, that put me on an exciting career trajectory, if you will. Um, Help launch and scale an edtech startup fresh out of high school. Ended up setting up South Africa's first blockchain fund with a close friend of mine. And shortly after that, lost my father, which meant I couldn't do crazy things. I had to pull up my socks, got a p- proper job, if you will, in management consulting. Um, moved countries back to India, worked at a family office, went into investment banking for a few years, learned how the world worked. And then shortly after that, wanting to build my own um, thing that mattered, that made the world a better place with the experience I had, uh, wanted to pursue studying further. Did a master's in entrepreneurship. That's how I ended up in Melbourne. And, you know, one thing led to the next. Won the Hack the Crisis Australia hackathon, launched a podcast to support young people on the path to entrepreneurship and ended up founding Inam with all these various skill sets that I built up. As Steve Jobs always says, the dots never connect looking forward. They always connect looking backwards. So every little piece of experience I've had along the way has helped shape me into wanting to be a founder, wanting to support founders and and build a business. But that hasn't come with its own trials, tribulations and challenges, which is what have kind of molded me into loving the journey instead of that end destination. Being a founder is not about having a successful company or being a unicorn or any of those things that are glamorized in today's world, but really the journey of getting there. So when it comes to me being a founder, I think it's the energy that was around me, my parents, my upbringing, the things I just dabbled in, messed around, made a lot of mistakes, um, lessons I learned, and that put me in the direction of wanting to become a founder and now being a founder of, of an impact investing fintech. Cool. I hope that answers your question. It's very <laughs> long-winded. but So when did you decide to become a founder? Do you remember? I don't think I have a point in time that I decided. I think I always wanted to build something on my own. Um, my parents initially wanted me to join the family business. I said no because <laughs> I just wasn't interested in it. But I knew that I wanted to do something of my own. And it was probably fresh out of high school that I wanted to build something on my own. I knew I had to learn things first. Like I couldn't just make something. I had to learn how the world operated. So I knew I had there was a process that, you know, get a job, understand how the world works and then build something. But I think from a very early age, I always wanted to do my own thing. I remember in middle school, like grade seven and eight, we had this concept at school called cake and candy where we'd all set up a trestle table at break time and sell things. So um, ever since then, I've just been hooked on, oh, you know, making something, selling something to people, getting money for it, measuring expenses and making sure you have money left over afterwards. So I think I've always just wanted to make something of my own. So what year did you found in um, 2020? Cool. Um, yeah. 
So when and why did you found your startup? Yeah, I think, so the why is very important within ARM and that's owing to personal experience. So my father and my mother, they were both two of South Africa's most successful entrepreneurs in pharmaceuticals. And whilst dad was great at business, he wasn't very good at managing his own personal money. He was trying to make a difference by investing in places that mattered, but ended up losing his entire life savings in the millions. And five years later, his life. So we lost everything we had because we didn't know how and where to invest. And as a young person who now had to take care of his mother, I found myself in the same position. I ended up speaking to members of our team, members of the community, hundreds of other young people who found themselves in similar, if not as dire situations. And I knew that I simply cannot let any other family go through this ever again. And that's really why we created Inam. And Inam is the Impact OS reinventing investing to change the world. And what we mean by that is we're helping young people that don't know how and where to invest to do so with an impact by embedding investment literacy right into the investment process, which allows us to curate custom micro portfolios of 10 to 15 stocks from around the world for just $10 a month. And the vision here is to redirect every single dollar of capital into impact. Yeah. So tell me, how does Anam contribute to a more sustainable financial ecosystem? Right. I think we do so by ensuring every dollar of capital within the financial ecosystem is redirected towards impact. We're moving the money to make sure it makes a difference in every step of the capital cycle. So tell me, what's the one thing that makes Anam most unique? I think the thing that makes us most unique is our ability to empower our customers. And we do that by embedding investment literacy throughout the investment process. No other financial services businesses or investment apps or wealth management apps really empower their customers to make decisions on their own by teaching them how to do it. So we are in that embedded investment literacy portion is I think the most critical and the most unique aspect of our offering paired with the fact that we're providing access to the global markets of impact. So we're not just focusing on a particular geography, we're really putting our money where our mouth is by ensuring that every dollar of capital that our customers invest is going to globally shift to the needle into impact and not just in a con highly concentrated or focused geography. How do you measure the impact you're having? Oh, love this question. So we use a three-pronged approach to measure our impact and to actually ensure that the businesses we're empowering our customers to invest in make an impact. It's governed by something called Impact Frontiers, which is a global organization that creates a framework to standardize impact measurement or ensure that there's a strong baseline. And what that looks like obviously is financial robustness in a business. So is it financially going to provide a return. Um, there you look at traditional metrics such as you know your EBITDA, your revenue, your price to earnings, and your profitability over the long term and your cash flows. On top of that, we embed an impact matrix, which we ensure that our businesses focus are focused on benefiting the planet or contributing to solutions that benefit the planet. What that means is looking at systemic change, looking at business models that employ impact at the forefront. So something like a solar panel manufacturer, something like a hydroponic agriculture producer, something like a vegan leather manufacturer, where it's not just a product, it's the entire system or the value chain that's being impacted from an impact perspective, essentially. So we ensure that we're focusing on those two categories of companies, benefiting and contributing. And the final way we measure our impact is psychosocial analysis on the leadership teams of the companies that we're investing in. So are these business leaders in, have an ingrained quality of impact? Because we don't want Harvey Weinsteins popping out of our portfolio companies. So do they embody the impact they're trying to create through the businesses they run. And so that's really how we measure our impact. And then there's obviously the generic metrics that we make available to our consumers, such as renewable gigawatts of energy generated, carbon emissions prevented, animals saved, trees planted as a direct result of their investment in these companies. Cool. Thank you for that detailed answer. My pleasure. What countries are you operating right now? We're currently pre-revenue and pre-operations. Um, we will be launching in Australia and shortly after that scaling globally to Europe and India as our first two expansion markets. Um, however, regardless of where we physically operate, we provide access to global stock markets. So um, our current home base is Australia and then we'll look to expand to India and Europe. 
Cool. So you set your pre-launch. Do you have a wait list of some sort? And if so, what's your traction on that? Yeah. So we've actually been able to build a database of over a half a million target customers from our target audience, which is young Australians that are socially aware, 18 to 30 years old, um, by engaging with values aligned communities across Australia. On our wait list for launch, we have 3000 people already signed up. We're not activating our database until our product is out in market. But even prior to that, we have 3,000 people already signed up to our wait list, um, ready to go when the app launches. So, yeah. Cool. Awesome. So where do you see NAM headed in the next 12 months? Right. I think um, most important for us is getting the product out in market within Australia. So that's one of our key goals for the next 12 months and shortly after that expanding to our first global markets exploring europe and india india is looking very promising at the moment so we're looking to launch in australia and scale globally quickly so that's really um where we're headed and what we're trying to do focus being launch and then expansion globally so considering that you're pre-launch are you currently raising i am indeed so we're in the process of closing our pre-seed fundraise it's a safe note a 15% discount and a $5 million valuation. It is two thirds committed. So we've got 230K committed from that round and looking to close it with another 270. And that really helps us get our product out in market, our first 20,000 customers and our first $10 million in AUM. Cool. So what has been your favorite learning objective since becoming a founder? I think getting comfortable with and failing. Learning to fail and fail well has been probably one of the biggest learnings, learning to pivot, learning that things are not going to go to plan, but still finding a way to make it work. It's just the nature of startups and part of, as I alluded to earlier, falling in love with the journey instead of the outcome, because the outcome is never really going to be what you expect. Um, there are days when you hit a milestone you set for yourself and you're like, oh God, it happened. But the way in which it happened will never be the way you planned or charted it out to be. So just being comfortable to fail, failing, actually failing and recognizing those failures and then learning from them to take the next step forward um, to make make better of it. Cool. Let's talk about Startup Bootcamp. Yes. Why did you join Startup Bootcamp? Ah, oh, um, I think Startup Bootcamp, and this is just to give you some context, this is coming from the from a background of being exposed to and being part of a variety of programs across the startup ecosystem within Australia. And the biggest challenge I found with those is a lot of them are very generic. Like startups are unique. Each startup is solving its own individual problem and its own in its own sector and segment and industry. Most programs aren't targeted towards a sector or an industry or a specific kind of, pro of, of problem. Where a startup bootcamp had this dedicated sustainable fintech accelerator and sustainable fintech fund that is literally ticking every box for what inam is we're a fintech we're in sustainable finance we're focused on impact investing and i'm like this is tailored and targeted towards what we're actually trying to achieve whereas a bunch of other programs focus on your things that most founders do need such as you know, how do you solve a problem what kind of product are you going to build how are you going to build a product how do you scale your team but it's never specific to what you're trying to do so when i heard about the startup bootcamp program i was like this is exactly what we're trying to do and for that reason i was like it's probably the best program to engage to help us solve the problems we want to solve that we're in and the challenges we're engaging and build a community that gets what we're trying to do because a lot of times half a conversation goes into explaining what you're trying to achieve and why it's important. Whereas if it's a targeted, specific, tailored program, you don't need to have that conversation. And I've experienced that in our cohort as well. I don't need to explain why impact investing or having fintechs that are focused on sustainable finance is important. That's usually a very important part of having any conversation. But knowing that you're already in an environment that gets it is why I chose and wanted to be part of Startup Bootcamp. Awesome. So what value did you gain from the sustainable fintech program at Startup Bootcamp? I think asking questions that I hadn't thought of asking myself um, and finding answers to them in a very targeted, pragmatic and um, efficient manner is what I took away from most. Because a lot of times as founders, we don't know what we don't know. And shining a light and pointing, asking those questions that need to be answered is very important to be able to succeed. And it's fine if you don't have an answer or that question helps you understand that there is a lot you still need to figure out. But knowing that that question needs to be asked is probably most important. 
Cool, awesome. What role does Startup Bootcamp play in your development as a company? I think it's been critical for where we were at. I think we entered the program at a point where we'd undergone some very significant commercial challenges, some very significant team challenges. And honestly, we, we felt like we were just stuck in the water. And I think Startup Bootcamp reignited all those pieces of the puzzle that needed to get going to help us literally accelerate as an accelerator program does but to move forward and solve a lot of those problems so yeah cool so weeks 10 and 11 of the program were very focused on investment as we call them investment readiness weeks yes so we had investor sneak peek investment simulations how did they provide value to you and how did they prepare you even further yeah i think being put in front of investors, regardless of whether they're going to invest or not, is always an important experience and always an important conversation to have because you're opened up to a perspective that you won't otherwise have. As a founder, as a founding team, you're always in the thick of your business, which means you never have a second pair of eyes or an external pair of eyes looking at or vetting what you're doing, which is one of the things we actually got out of the program. We set up an advisory board to help us with exactly that. And being put in front of those investors in week 10 and 11 was very much an eye-opener in terms of what what other questions have we not thought of? What other challenges might we, you know, incur going forward? So I think those weeks were very important for us to introspect and retrospect on what have we done over the last couple of weeks in the program? And do we have answers to those questions? And I'm very happy to share that in most instances we did. There were no curveballs that came at us that we hadn't thought of we were very well prepared to answer those investor questions to provide confidence and if we weren't able to to know why we didn't and what we needed to work on whether it was a narrative thing whether it was a business development thing so yeah how did SBC help you regarding your raise I think SBC helped us prepare for it really well Um, understanding that we're operating in a challenging environment what kinds of questions we need to answer and how to answer them. Because we always, you can always answer a question, but there is a way in which an investor is looking for that answer to receive confidence in your ability to execute. We're an early stage startup. At this point in time, no one's really investing in the business or the idea. They're investing in our team's ability to execute. So being able to provide that confidence and what that confidence looks like in multiple forms, whether it's a model, a deck, a conversation, an email. So prepping us for that and prepping us well, I think, has been very important to help us get our raise across the line. So let's talk about the sustainable fintech program. What did you personally love most? I think the cohort, um, the people that you've met, that we've met collectively has been amazing. And they're from every single part of the world. To know that impact and sustainable fintech is, is a concept that is unanimous globally with the caliber of those people has just been amazing. It's like any any really good program you do in your life, it's most it's the people that make the biggest difference. So I think the cohort. Speaking of people, mentorship at Startup Bootcamp, yes. what conversations really yeah. stuck out to you? What mentors did you really love? Amazing. I think something that as a this is very specific to an arms business case, we were struggling with is our B2B offering. And going back to the point I made earlier about how specific the program was to fintech and sustainable fintech, um, we needed to work on that B2B offering. And we found a mentor, his name's James Marshall, who was literally ticking every box. We needed to build a, a part of the business that would cater to businesses, that would allow companies to ensure their employees could access Inam as an impact investment offering through their salary. And that's what James spent his whole life doing and building. And to be able to find that level of exact connection, I think was so critical and was the real value add that Startup Bootcamp bought, the very tailored ability to connect problems to solutions through people and through mentorship. So, yeah. Cool. Thank you. Let's talk demo day. Oh, exciting. (laughs) Yeah. So obviously we are going to Money 2020 Asia. What are you looking forward to the most? Okay, I'm going to say the people. I know that sounds repetitive, but I think just being in that room with fintech leaders who have built and scaled incredible businesses to learn from them, to hear from them, and then most importantly, have the opportunity to pitch what we're doing in front of them, not only as part of Startup Bootcamp's demo day, but also as part of mass validation in a, in a new market with people from all over the world to hear their thoughts on what we're building and what we're doing. 
I think the opportunity to do that at a global stage is, is just, you know, invaluable and very rare to come by. So very grateful. Okay, cool. So obviously there'll be thousands of people watching your pitch, wanting to talk to you. What is your key objective for Money 2020 Asia? I think our key objective is A, to find values aligned investors within that crowd of thousands. And secondly, to really find strategic distribution partners and partnerships. We bring to the table access to a market of investors who have previously been untapped by traditional institutional financial systems, companies and businesses and banks who are looking actively to tap into that market because that's the new generation of wealth builders and investors. So finding strategic distribution partnerships across Asia, Australia um, and the broader global community really is one of our key objectives and also just making sure we can close that raise. Cool. Awesome. So last question. If any existing founder or aspiring founder came up to you asking for one piece of advice, what would you tell them? I think always remain open to hearing other people's perspectives on your business, whether they're good, whether they're bad. Never assume that you know everything about what you're doing. Yes, you have a high level of conviction in what you're doing, but never assume you have all the answers because you don't. You just don't and always lend to wisdom and experience to guide you because passion, energy, you know, extreme, what, what's the word, obsession gets you far, but you always need that supporting, guiding hand of wisdom and experience and being open to listening. Like, keep your ears open. You don't have to talk all the time. Just listen. Cool. I think that was some very inspiring words to wrap up this podcast. Thank you so much, Arjun, for being on here. Thanks for having me. And of thanks, course. huge shout out to the Startup Bootcamp team. I think yourself, Trevor, Rich, Tim, wouldn't have gotten this far without you guys. So appreciate it a lot. Thank you. Thank you for tuning in and we'll hope to see you again next time. Peace. <laughs>